Why, hello there. Do you like my hat? It was $5. I was feeling posh, so I bought it. Thanks. Anyway, today we are going to be making the Cinderella hoop skirt for the Cinderella ball gown. So, I mean, yep, that's pretty much what we're doing. I didn't really have anything else to say for this intro. So let's do it. Here is my reference board and I have a collage of all my pictures here. And this is really the only hoop skirt reference photo. I mean, of course, because it's in the collage, it's really tiny, but like, that doesn't mean that's like the only thing I have. There, um, this came from the Daily Mail's article and it's pretty much the only picture I could find of the hoop skirt that they used in the movie. So based on that one reference, I drew out an entire like hoop skirt analysis um, paper thing. So I just kind of copied half of the hoop skirt. So I've got like where the boning goes, where the twill tape goes. Um, she has these two little bumps here and I don't know what they're for, but I thought they might have been handles so she could like reach through her skirt and grab them while she was running away from the ball from the ball because some of her dresses had like pockets or little holes that she could put her hands through so i don't know if what those are supposed to be i looked it up and i tried to research them but if anyone else d knows what these are just let me know i will be including them on my hoop skirt i don't know if they're going to have a purpose really, but it's just to be screen accurate. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and sort of copy this design and see what we come up with. The first thing I did was I draped my bones. I don't know, I just, I pinned my boning to my dress form and I used some of this twill tape, and it's not really twill tape, it's more of a ribbon because it was the only thing I could find in bulk for um, an affordable price. But um, I was pinning my bones to my twill tape, and then after that I folded the twill tape in half and did a zigzag stitch along the twill tape and inserted my bones. I put two bones into one casing just for added strength. I am using a synthetic boning, which is really not the best option for a crinoline, but in the end it worked. Then the next thing I did was I attempted to reconstruct my entire hoop skirt by just pinning all the bones and the boning channels together. This was quite time consuming, and I will say that the main um, thing you have to do when making this crinoline is basically the whole time you just have to play with, play around with it. There's really no set way to do this because I wasn't really following a pattern or a tutorial. I just was playing around with it until it worked for me. I found it easiest to work from the top down and don't be upset if you find this process really tricky because it is really tricky because you don't get all the structure from all the bones when you start pinning them on so it can be a little bit flimsy and floppy and not very good. If you're a beginner, um, I recommend trying new things, but this project may seem a little bit more intimidating for beginners. So if you're beginning at sewing, I don't know if this is something that you would want to try, but you know, if you want to do it, you can do it. You can do whatever you want. I just found this a little bit tricky. So, um, if you, uh, are prepared for a challenge, then good. If not, then maybe you want to buy your own crinoline if you are focusing on making your own Cinderella dress. All right, friends, so it has been about three or four days, and I know that sounds like a long time, but I've only been working about one or two hours a day, so it's about 10-ish hours that I spent on this, which um, I know that's not like proper math, but I'm estimating it took me about 10 hours to mess around with this. So it did take a long time, only because I didn't really know what I was doing, and so it just took me forever. But basically, I did this whole top bit here with these two hoops, 
and then these two hoops. And then I was working my way down, but instead I found it more efficient to actually do these ones first and then do the diagonal hoops. So this is what I have come up with. Now there are two errors that I have made and that is why it is just pinned together and it's not sewn so that I can make adjustments. But I have found that I have made two mistakes already. And so I went back and looked at my reference and I realized that I put four hoops on the bottom section and there are actually five hoops on the bottom section. So I'm going to have to make another hoop for the bottom and another thing I forgot was that there's this little fabric section here. Um, I'm not sure if that really existed on the original hoop skirt, but I think it's there so that you can, so it helps attach that dust ruffle. So I think I will be making that little pouch thing and I will be making another hoop and I may or may not, this is just an idea, I might be making two more hoops and just joining it right up against this bottom one here because when I unpin this everything just kind of falls apart and so I have to rework that entire thing so I might make six hoops on the bottom and just kind of put it up against there we'll see and then the other mistake I noticed was this here is actually boned and it is not the twill tape so this part with the little handle is supposed to be boned and I didn't do that I just put twill tape here because I thought it was just another piece of twill tape but I think it's boned and so I don't know if I want to fix that either and I'm just kind of struggling because I just don't know if I want to fix it because I'm lazy <laughs> and but I'm also kind of a perfectionist so I do want it to be exactly replicated but I'm still not sure. So I'm I'm still debating on whether or not I'm going to bone this part. And then we're going to sew that little pouch at the bottom, which we attached, attached the dust ruffle to. I began these changes by first making a fifth bone to go on the bottom of the crinoline. And I just measured how far apart that was from the other bones. I think the original had them all equally spaced out, but I don't know. I just did it differently for some reason. And then I ironed that bone flat, and then I cut out the little pouch bag thing. I don't really know what it's called. I cut it out of some sheer white organza, and this is part of the organza that's going into the actual dress, but it was just a little strip, so I didn't really mind. So I just cut, up, cut that out. I believe it was about 8 inches wide, and then I just sewed that together. I also made sure to put a really tight zigzag stitch on the edges because sheer fabric needs to be like extra enclosed, especially if it's going to take any amount of strain, you just need that extra security. Alright, so I've sewn my boning channels onto my organza piece, and I'm still going to insert the bone with another boning channel on top, just because that this organza is very sheer fabric and I want to make sure that um, like the bone isn't poking through anywhere so just thought I would say that. Once those bones were inserted inside the little fabric thing I pinned them once again to the crinoline. Taking care to make sure that all the um, loose twill tape was as tight as it could be. After a few more hours of messing around with the shape of the crinoline, I finally decided to sew it in place. I spent an entire weekend hand stitching all the bones to the twill tape. You could have done this by machine, but I wanted to do it on my dress form just to make sure that I got the proper shape and nothing was shifting around. The next thing I did was I stitched on another piece of twill tape to be the waistband, and this just ties in the front. My ribbon was pretty strong enough to hold this all up, so it worked. Alright, before I explain anything else, let me just tell you that maneuvering a hoop skirt under a sewing machine is really hard. So, the waistband was not sewn in very, very neatly, but it is definitely secure. So, let me just show you what I did. So. I've got these two straps here which come out and they help pull this front bit and then I've got 
the rest of the straps connected in the back. And um, on my dress form, it does kind of like sag a little bit in the back because of the weight. But when I wear it, it doesn't really do that because, um, I mean, I kind of arch my back when I put it on to help support this while I'm tying it. Whereas the dress form is just kind of straight, so it sags a little bit. But that's okay. Um, so I've got these two secured with one of these, like, I don't know what this is called. One of these boxes with, like, the little X in. And the diagonal stitches actually help anchor the twill tape um, to the waistband. And then these two just come up here and then they get zigzagged and contained in the waistband as well. I've got one of these wider boxes in the back to contain all these straps and when this is pulled taut um, these are not as uh, flimsy. And then it's just the same for the other side. The whole thing ties in the front and that's pretty much it for the waistband. And I think the only thing I have left to do, um, this is a really weird angle, it makes the hoop skirt look really thin. Anyway, um, the last thing I need to do is just sew the handles onto this piece of twill tape. And actually, after doing further research on this uh, crinoline, I figured out that these uh, the little things that I thought were handles are actually handles, so I thought that was a pretty good guess. So. Yes, so she does have, um, it said there were like two secret handles underneath, and yeah, they were, I think they were just used so that she can help um, pick up all her skirts at once. So I will be putting those on next. And here are the handles.
well, that's about it. I'm sorry this wasn't much of a tutorial because it was, you know, it was my first time making a crinoline, so I didn't really know what I was doing, and it didn't turn out quite as perfect as I would like it to be. But if I were to make it again, I would probably make it out of something stronger, like spring steel boning, and I probably would make it a lot bigger, too. But other than that, I think it turned out really good for my first try, and I look forward to seeing you in other sewing adventures.